What is up, guys? Zach Ginn here. Rick Ginn here. And in today's video, I finally brought Rick along here. And we are going to be cold calling together. That's right. Rick Ginn's going to be doing some cold calls today with me. And uh, we're going to talk to some motivated sellers, hopefully try to close as many deals as we possibly can, and uh, talk to real-life sellers and show you what wholesaling real estate's all about live. Watch us do it. Uh, we're pretty excited about this. Uh, we're ready to go. And uh, yeah, let's get into it, guys. So uh, what you're going to see here is us cold call uh, leads, lists, sellers, people that don't know who we are. We're going to give offers. We're going to see where they're at. And uh, as you know, with these live cold calls, anything can happen. That's the point. That's why it's crazy. That's why we're excited about this uh, to get it going <laughs> and break it all down. So uh, let's cut the fluff. Let's get straight into it. Cue the intro and let's get some cold calling in. Let's do it. Woo! Fuck out of bed, bitch. Go. Get up, get up, and then they got cold call. Gotta wake up, gotta wake up, bitch. Get up. Get up, get up. Get up. ready to go so uh we're excited about this we are going to be cold calling live and so as you know uh to cold call live we have to prove it to you that we are currently live uh so no guru in real estate wholesaling ever does this are we calling real estate agents no we're not oh we're that's the stupidest yeah. thing ever what we're doing is calling real life sellers so this is time.gov as you can see here this is the official time uh dates everything like that so if you're watching this you can tell pop up your time.gov you can tell that we are currently live Right now, no guru ever does that because they're scared little babies. And uh, without further ado, let's get it going. Uh, and we got to officially know most gurus have their grandma or an actor or an employee of the other line of these cold calls <laughs> to make them seem like they're good. Uh, and then you guys can tell it's like this isn't even a real conversation. It's just stupid. What we do is we have a picker wheel. We don't know where we're cold calling today. That's the point. I don't even know where I'm calling. But uh, the picker wheel of truth is going to tell us where to call. And now that's the exciting part. The ones that are not highlighted are areas that we've already called or I have already done this year. The list is kind of smaller, uh, but it's pretty exciting. So uh, without further ado, figure out where we're uh -huh. calling today. That's Dana White. <laughs> Here we are calling in Idaho. Idaho. All right. Idaho is kind of small, so we might have to do another state after this, but uh, no big deal. So we're going to hide. Idaho. I don't think I ever made a phone call to Idaho. Idaho's got some interesting markets. Got the Boise, Coeur d'Alene. I mean, there's some decent areas uh, there, so not that bad. So what we're going to do is go to Idaho. Uh, one thing we got to know is Idaho's got a lot going on. Uh, there's expensive areas, non-expensive areas. Uh, so what we're going to do first and foremost is figure out in Idaho where we should roughly be at, right? And so uh, we're looking here and we're going to Zillow and we're just going to check out what the median home price is. You talk here, median home price in Idaho is 444,000. So we want to stay below that number, obviously here. No big deal. But uh, that, okay, now we know where we're going to be. Too. Oh, of course, it's down 8.3%. Just honestly, I would have never ridiculous. guessed a number that big in Idaho. It's well, Coeur d'Alene and Boise are just booming. Um, and the other ones are like really cheap. So we got to make sure we're in areas that are decent for it. Uh, a lot of good Airbnbs there too. So uh, decent areas. So what we're going to do is just, I'm going to go here and go to Idaho in Zillow. And what we're going to do is cold call the FISBO. So uh, let's go here. We are currently on Zillow and uh, we're going to call. So let's go here. What I basically do is I literally just go to the price. We will go, we can do the max price. I don't want over 500,000, obviously in Idaho. We're going to go to more. We are going to go not by agent, by by owner. And we're only going to do owner posted. That's all we're doing here. Not a lot. So honestly, we're probably going to have to do multiple states today, which isn't a big deal. We're by newest, right? And what we're going to do here is keep scrolling down until we get the old ones over a hundred days. Uh, let's filter out even more. Let's get rid of lots and land. 
and we'll keep the manufacturer too. All right, so let's scroll down here. Can we get ones over 100 days old? All right, now we're in the older ones, and these are going to be the good convos we're going to have. Now, remember, the older conversations we have, they're a lot less likely to pick up. That's okay. Um, and yeah, let's get calling here. So this one's ridiculous. 524 days. <laughs> so, I mean, there might be something wrong. There, there's definitely something wrong here. Uh, so what we're going to do is just give, a, give them a good old call. And we're going to figure out Did, what to do here. 500? That's yeah. like two years almost. Yeah. And so maybe they're motivated now. Year and a half. Changed. Whatever. We'll figure it out. I mean, we're just going to call and kind of figure this out. So wow. they probably won't pick up. And you start with the picture. No. Oh. I don't think they're going to pick up. It's, it's such an old lead. So we're going to go back here. Maybe that's why it's not selling. Oh, that's another reason why probably. Let's see if they pick up here. I doubt it though. Uh, a little hint for you. If you're selling a property, answer the dang phone. I, I, I've screamed about this forever. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It, it's, it's so stupid. Doubt it. Hey, this is Zach. Please give me a call back whenever you can. Thank you. All right, we've got this one in Gooding. Pretty Sorry. clean property right there. That's um, nice. Let's see here. 415 days on Zillow. Why is it stuck? It's a clean house. You can kind of just like, just roughly look at it here. This thing was listed for 405. Now it's at 398. That's a great reduction, isn't it? Most likely the price is just too high on this one. I mean, even you can go here and just see. I mean, the closest comp's 185. That's a cheaper house, though. So we, we just got to yeah. be careful here. I mean, I'll give these people a call and just kind of roughly see what's going on with it. But this thing's been listed for a decent amount, 415 days. So we'll figure this one out, too. That's not something to be proud of, either. Oh, people get really offended when I call them like that. This is fun. Sweet. <laughs> Ah, Two, three, all right. Eight, five, we keep going. Zero, Remember, these are older ones. Six, two, five, two. Hey, this is Zach. Please give me a call back whenever you can. Thank you. All right. So we're just going to keep dialing until someone answers. These people are crazy out in Idaho. Okay. Seven, seven, two, three. I, I love to look at the different landscapes. Now, this is another clean house. How long is that one on for? I'm noticing a trend if they're 339 went back up. <laughs> uh, they raised the price. They raised the price. Jeez. There's no money to be made if they don't pick up the dang phone. I'll tell you that. They're sleeping in in Idaho today. Ooh, look at that. That's sweet right there. Hey, this is Zach. Give me a call back whenever you can. Thank you. Look at that. You got some uh, rust. That's probably water and the thing's rusting, right? It's just taking off the house. Yeah, it's either a, a plumbing vent. It, it doesn't look big enough to be a chimney, but I don't know. Maybe some from Idaho can tell me what it is. Okay. You get like a 10 line dialer where you both like call at the same time. Uh, that'd be great. It's another clean house, though. A lot going on. That's not terrible, though. Very nice, quiet neighborhood. Please leave your message for 
your message oh my God. Hey, this is Zach. Please give me a call back whenever you can. That's the problem with properties listed for over 100 days. Like, they're actually decent deals, but they just don't like answering their dang phone. Wow. It's catch-22. Hey, this is Zach. Please give me a call back whenever you can. Thanks. Guys, people got my money. I got to go get some deals oh here. This God, is driving me on, nuts. Man. All right, 208. We're going to do another state soon. They don't pick up. Maybe Idaho, they got different time frames over there. I don't know. Oh, look, look at a little wooden shack there. Hello, hi. Is this the owner of 339 Center Street? Yes, this is me. Hello, hi. My name is Zach. I'm actually with my uh, partner, Rick, here. And uh, we're, we're looking at this property. He actually just uh, showed me the link to it. So uh, we decided to give you a call and kind of see if the property is still for sale. It is. Um, it's, I, I've had some pretty disappointing offers from investors, so I'm probably not a good candidate for that because we've put a year and a half of hard labor into it <laughs> so we're not oh. going to let it go for cheap if okay. you would have caught me a year and a half ago maybe but <laughs> okay so the price is 313 and i won't entertain any lowball offers i just can't i don't have to sell it i don't want to sell it for a lowball okay okay what's your name i don't think i caught it angela okay angela so uh this is zach here hi angela it's rick how you doing Good, good, good. We just we just saw your house, and uh, let let me ask you: What are you living in the house, or no, no, no? Is it vacant, or do you have a tenant in there? It, it, it is vacant, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, how long has it been vacant for? Um, I'm not sure. I want to go into that with you, but we, uh, like I just said, we have been renovating for a year and a half, so at least a year and a half. Okay. And it is a family owned home. Okay. Can can you tell me? Can you just give me a brief synopsis of what kind of renovations were done? Is it like major structural yeah, or? Not, not not major, but cosmetically pretty major. Just new, um, brand new kitchen floors are everywhere you go. The floors are either refurbished wood or they're new flooring, like Get carpet and tile and whatnot. So can hear it. Um, let's see, new some some new carpet in the bedrooms. Um, what else? Uh, new heater, gas heater, new water heater, uh -huh. a new, um, I just lost the word, the things around the outside, <laughs> the rain gutters. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm just yeah. looking at pictures online here and yeah, I the just. Lawn, the uh, lawn is new with the new sprinkler system. The front of the lawn, the front lawn is not new, but sprinkler system a okay. year ago, all throughout. Okay. Um, but yeah, kitchen. And then we just painted everything downstairs, got painted. Um, we left it with, uh, we didn't put any wallpaper back on. We stripped it off the, the, the plaster and put, and just painted it good, a good. neutral color um, until someone buys it once. If they want to do more wallpaper, great. We just didn't want to choose the colors okay. for them. Okay. Um, we did a lot of, of woodworking, refurbishing the, the pocket doors that are like 100 years old. So, um, yeah. What else would you think? Uh, my my other question the is, the pipes. Yeah, I, I, pipes. yeah, I see the the uh, the notes you put in here about like the financing, um, saying the the VA or the FHA, it says unlikely not to be approved. What? Yeah, just talking to realtors because because the upstairs is an addition that was never permitted, and the electrical is still some knob and tube, um, and, and FHA. Most of the time, we'll not look at knob and tube wiring, even though it works and it goes through a circuit box. Um, we just didn't feel like paying forty thousand dollars to update something that already worked. Um, and so a new owner can do that if they want. To, but... Okay, and what was the cost on that again? Well, we got a bid for forty thousand dollars, and I know dang well it's not going to cost that much. That's a lot that of money. That was just that was incredibly uh, 
disappointing that they thought we were going to pay forty thousand dollars for that kind of thing. Was so it? Didn't pursue further. Yeah, that was just yeah. the electrician's quote to do that. Uh huh. And, and somebody else told me the last guy that was an investor said, "Oh, that's ridiculous. We have friends that'll do it." You might get quoted that from retail, but we've got friends that are electricians that'll do it for like seven thousand or something like that. Yeah. I just don't have that kind of a friend. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Okay. And then when you said we did the work, did you you just did you hire people you know to do the work, or like you were you a big part of it yourself? My dad's a general. My dad's a general contractor, uh, and he owned the house before he gave it to me a year and a half ago. Okay. And so it was he, he and I, and and yeah. Okay. So we didn't hire out anybody. I got it. And it, my, my last question, I know I'm, I'm, I appreciate you answering all the questions. Did you at one point live in the house or you just used it as like a second house or a rental home or what was the initial purpose? Uh, it was a rental and it was a family rental basically. Okay. I was in it. Okay. Yeah. So I'm kind of looking at this here, you know, I'm just, let me know because I'm seeing the listing right here and uh, this kind of was talking about the right before. It said it got listed for 1800 um in March here, no, was that what it was getting rented out for? Um, that was no, that it was getting rented out for that. That was that was like a medium rent price, just just suggested by Zillow and looking at the other prices in town. Okay, sounds good, perfect. And so, and then just my other questions, and I I, I just want to know, it got says it got listed for two ninety nine, and then three nineteen, and three thirteen. So I see the price keeps changing. And you said you are firm at this 313, but obviously it looks like you were firm at 319 also and it changed. So Yeah, that's yeah, that just more information. It, it's it's a larger lot and my neighbor said she should probably be asking more. And so I went up to three nineteen and then um, I just decided to come down to three fifteen when I wasn't getting any bites. But um, yeah, prices are going up again. So Oh they are. I might be hit I might be hitting the sweet spot, yeah. Okay. Oh, I didn't know price sorry, I, I looked on Zillow and it said it, 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 Idaho is down eight percent, but I, I guess I, I guess that's wrong. Um, Zillow's, Zillow's estimate bumped it up nine thousand dollars a couple of days ago. Just I don't uh, know why that was. But. Okay. And so, did did does Zillow have that it's unpermitted on the um, estimate too? Because it says two seventy three. I'm done talking. I'm done talking. I'm sorry. I, okay. It's, just, it's all there. I, okay. I, well, we have an offer for you. Yeah. Okay. What's what's your offer? Yeah. So based on everything, um, right? What? Let me see what you wrote down. So I think basically, so what, 17,000 you think would be the renovations for the top to get that done? The wiring without looking I mean, at it, exactly. Would you take payments on the property? If it can't pass financing, would you finance it? No, I can't do that. Okay. Well, for cash, I'm thinking about, hmm. Well, you're, you're, you're typically a little different. So if it can rent out for 1800, I'm looking at it. I mean, what can you do? Like, I, I mean, if we bought this thing all cash, what, what all, all cash? I, I think you're going to have problems with financing on this one, no matter what you do. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm asking 313, and I'm pretty sure it's going to have to be a cash offer. Someone moving in from California or something. Okay. And so I'm, I'm waiting on it. You know, and I'm so, in a big hurry. can you give us our word that you will not ever reduce the price if interest rates keep rising? Or are you going to keep the price? No. no oh, why would I so keep price... my word on anything? You just well, <laughs> well, you said it's going to be firm at 313. And I, I would hate for us not to agree on an agreement price. And then it doesn't work. And then you drop it another nine grand. Another nine grand. I mean, it was 299 originally. So I'm just trying to understand how you went from 300. If you, if you want to buy it, make me an offer. That's how this okay. works. I'm not going to okay. go into any kind of big deal with you, whether if you don't buy it. Okay. That's not how I did. That's what I did. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry for being ridiculous. Okay. Well, that sounded ridiculous. Okay. So yeah, based on the numbers here, <laughs> so based on the numbers here, if I have to go purchase this property, look at everything, I would have to be around two hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Okay, yeah. So no deal. Thank okay. you, though. Thank you for okay. trying. Okay. Am I the crazy Bye. one or you? <laughs> She really needs to listed with a real. That's the problem is like she needs to be listed with a realtor, like cuckoo. You know, All I just gave a board, price just like to give a price like, out. But like, let, let's kind of look at the numbers here. I this thing can't lower. pass. This thing can't pass any financing. Yeah, it's it's she's doomed. She's doomed with that. 
Comps for the rent are showing eighteen hundred. So like this thing won't be worth more than two twenty, right? Yeah. She thinks prices are going up. Which, what? what, what? It's just, these are just the, the latest ridiculous people. And so, sellers just they. She just has an opinion and she puts it on that. And I just find it so funny when people say, I don't need to sell it. I'm like, but you got it listed and you're answering your phone. Yeah. I think you do need to sell it. I just don't think you're realistic. This emphasized the point if like everyone who's going to do Fizbo's, trust me, there are some gems in there, but you got to get through a lot of them because there's a lot of them just like that. And not every calls like that. And you have to have optimism. Don't get me wrong. we we entertain her a little bit, but it's like she has everything working against her. And she's just like, I don't need to sell it. Oh. And at some point you will all agree. She's going to give up. The question is who's going to hit her. And I didn't even get into like her other contracts and then they don't want to, I'm not going to tell you what I did with the property. I mean, these are typical Fizbo's calls. They drive me cuckoo, cuckoo nuts. But in the beginning guys, sometimes you just got to get through. You got to get through sometimes hundreds, if not thousands of them to find the right person. At some point, she's going to give up because yeah. you can't get financing. Interest rates are going to stay even or go up, which is going to reduce the value of the property. She doesn't want to deal with the electrical problem. Most likely the 40 K is because it's not the wiring. It's just a really challenging job. Maybe it's an older home. And if she threw out 40 K, it probably is 40 K. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I, I honestly just, there's at least you can deal with some of my pain she was nice she i think she's nice. really nice but it's like my adhd kicks in when they start like i don't need to sell it i'm like but you are selling it and so sometimes with that one the other route i would have gone is like why don't you just list it with a realtor so she doesn't like realtors she doesn't want to deal with investors oh, yeah. you're never going to make a person like that sell so it's like if i'm going through and ripping off 500 calls, I'm going to get in and out. I'd probably be done with her less than two minutes. No, it, Maybe even a minute. It's so stupid. It was just, it was so funny. But I mean, just got to call them, see what's going she's on. She's nice though. Yeah. She's nice. At least people know you're smooth with the sellers. It's You're not smoother than me with it. But I'm a little more like to the point with them. But like I, I sense no motivation. You have to, you have to, honestly, the best thing you do on any type of cold call Number one, you've got to disqualify first. But number two is you sometimes just have to set them up. So if you know it's not going to get a financing, you've had it on the market close to a year. Like, let's be honest, like it's not working. And yeah. But you have to have the, the goal is to try to have them say it and not you because they yeah. get highly offended when you go, oh, oh yeah. my God. So I admit it's like, like what I want to say is like, do you want to sell this property or you just want to keep holding on to it? And by the way, when people tell you they don't need to sell it, it's just a flat out lie. Otherwise, she yeah. wouldn't put it on the market. I agree. It's just so funny. <laughs> I need like a, a like a tough New York seller. Oh, those That's are my best. favorite. Some nice gardening there. Beautiful pots. Beautiful. Craft drum. Beautiful located condo. <laughs> oh, it's a condo. Pond. That's why you can't say anything. 349. Hi, this is Craig. I'm sorry you missed your call. I'm going to give a message and I'll try to call you back just as soon as possible. Thank you. At the tone, please record your Reduce message. Reduce price by 500. 499 to be exact. Hey, this is Zach. Please give me a call back whenever you can. Uh, he reduced price by 500. Yeah. That's so, guys, th honestly, this is the reason why the whole realtor industry got created because. People can't save them themselves from like selling properties. And sometimes that's the problem with Fizbo's. And sometimes you just got to be in the right place at the right time. If you find a property that's not on the market a super long time and already has some sort of qualification process, they can't get a mortgage. It's just a matter of time before they have to sell the investor. Look at that carpet. That's beautiful. So they have to go with an. I would let you know, FYI, every single time on these listings or when a seller says this, I have to sell the house as is. That's money. That's cash. It's never going to happen. The market's not stupid, guys. But because it's as is, they're not going to get the insane price. And that's just a delusion. So this is so funny, though. But like, it's... <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Let's call this person up. But yeah, this one, why it's attractive for me to call is you see this right here. Where is it? 
Some Home juice. for sale eyes. It's the first thing they put. You know why? There's something massively wrong uh, here. She's not. It's like on a this. time machine. I bet this. The, the outside put, doesn't look horrible. When you put for sale as like um as is your sale, first statement. It, it's when that is your first <laughs> statement. <laughs> a, a true gem for garden lovers. Oh boy, oh boy. It's it's ew. got two refrigerators though. You can't go wrong with that. Yikes. And so we'll call. It's a well maintained home. Blah 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 blah. See how it goes. Give me a call. What, what what is that in the backyard? Looks like a lava field. Dry dirt. This looks like concrete. I guess it's a dry dirt bed. You see a 303, 299, 299. Huge reductions. 295. Huge. Hi, you reached the voicemail on Piggy Marin. Sorry, I missed. Hey, this is Zach. Please give me a call back whenever you can. A forty thousand dollar price increase. No, 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 no. I just I, want to call this person and see what's wrong with you. Do you really want to do that? They got a hot tub, low. Not for rent or lease to buy. This house in California would be three million dollars. <laughs> Don't. Make- Oh my I didn't realize gosh. how entertaining the Fisbo descriptions are. These people are ridiculous. House needs a new so, roof. Did you did you notice like maybe it's an Idaho thing, but maybe everything on the West Coast, everybody thinks everyone's gonna move from California and like double the price of their house. Look what he wrote here. Be a great bed and breakfast, call James, have five point two acre property across the street, also for sale for two hundred. This house is not as Zillow values as it was for sale with the two other pieces of property next to it. Only this house is listed. Okay, come to the other pieces of property. Best city view. Look at that. I mean, if you're going to do a movie shoot from... Uh, who would ever put this house in California to be worth $3 million? I mean, you, I can do that at my house, too. My yeah. house would be worth uh, 10 times more in California. A okay. trailer in, the, in uh, California is worth a million. What kind of description is that? And why do you put all caps, too? This is ridiculous. I just want to call this guy. You really... This seems like a funny guy to be talking to. I want to see if he includes, because he said in the description here, why would he? Sh- this he house a- as is was for sale with two other pieces of property. I want to see what those. I want to look at those houses too. Maybe he increased it because he added a house. Three six nine five zero, and he said it'd be a good bed and breakfast. Uh, I don't see it. Yeah, dude, that's. If this was where the if I was going to do a horror movie, you'd be in there. This is look at that detail in the woodwork. Somebody's obsessed with woodwork here. I mean, that's a little nasty. It's a lot of wood, dude. That's not even eighties; it's seventies. Yeah, it's a weird one. Look I got this. Got to send this. It's got a jacuzzi. Got to send that picture to my dad because it looked. Is that overlooking an apartment complex too? Right there. Oh Lord, it is. Yeah, it over, there's two apartments. It's overlooking the view. Oh my god. But you get a peak of the water. It is technically waterfront. Waterfront view. What's wrong with these? Uh, all right, let's call this person up. I this is you're gonna have to switch states here soon. We're not getting anywhere. We're gonna see how this person goes. Forty thousand increase. a property i don't want to sell but i got it listed i don't think we're gonna answer on this guy didn't you like when you said well my neighbor said uh we should get this is james leave your message i'll be back as soon as i can thanks at the tone please record your message when you've finished recording you may hang up or press one for more options hey this is zach please give me a call back whenever you can thanks I don't know who that is. Hello? Yeah, I was returning your call. Hello, hi. This is Zach. I was calling some properties uh, in Idaho that me and my partner were looking to buy uh, on Zillow. W- what address uh, was yours? 421 Dooley. 421 Dooley. Okay. Let's see here. Which one is this? That's the one with the view. 
Oh, oh, okay. Uh, 420 on Dewey uh, Avenue. Oh, okay. Hey, how's it going? My name is Zach. Uh, what? James, right? Yeah. Hey, James. I'm with my partner, uh, Rick, here. Hey there. How you doing, James? We, we just pulled your uh, your property online. I mean, it looks interesting with the view. Can, can you explain what the deal is with the... It said it had like two other houses with it, and we're just trying to understand. No, it, it doesn't. It just has one house. I've got two properties. I got property next to it across the street from I got 5.2 acres and I got five lots and two shops next to the house, but the house is just for sale. Well, the, the 5.2 acres is for sale too, but the two shops and the lots aren't for sale. Okay. The house is for sale separately and the 5.2 acres across the street is for sale also. And that, that's yours, right? That's what? The 5.2 acres is yours? Yes. Okay, is it, is it just vacant land right now? Yeah, it's just a vacant land. It's got it used to be a house on it. Uh, they tore it down, and it's got a big lot off the road, and it kind of goes up the hill, and okay. a lot of trees on it. What well, a big view. My question is, uh, what is the potential to do with that land, and how close in relative to the property you got listed right here we're talking about? It's right across the street. Is it... Okay. And have you ever looked at what the capacity of like what you could build on that for like residential or anything well, like that? The, the, the area down below, you could probably build uh, a 16 flex apartment. It's a big enough area to uh, build an apartment complex or a house, a big house. But um, there's enough room. And in, in this city, uh, rentals are real rare. So an apartment complex would be a a good idea for somebody yeah i mean yeah they're not the, yeah i i don't know the navigation of <laughs> getting that approved in your city some cities are very uh it's it's a very long expensive process to do that but um well not here really they, they, they want you to get stuff built because there's no rentals this town's only three thousand people i got it but, but you have three federal agencies and you got a state prison that takes most of the housing most of the wives of the prisoners come here and rent while their husbands are in jail, in prison. So, uh, and then you got three federal agencies. You got the U.S. Forest Service, U.S. Wildlife, and the U.S. Corps of Engineers. So they have a lot of people transferring, and they'll rent a house before they buy one. So rentals are real rare and hard to find in this town. So, okay, uh, apartment complexes are really wanted, and the city would help you to build anything, but. I got it. These are just uh, one of those things in this town. Okay, so I'm I'm thinking I'm looking at picture number three on your thing, and it, it just it shows the overview, and it looks like there's a river like across the street, and maybe like two apartment complexes. Is that correct? Yeah, well, it's not an apartment complex. It's a it's a senior citizen retirement home. Ah, uh, are they both? Is it like the same property or two separate property owners? I see. I see one with a brown rooftop and one with a gray rooftop. Uh, oh, the brown is the the closest one is a uh, is a senior citizen home. It's uh, uh, got both uh, assisted and unassisted living apartments, and then the one across the street is the Best Western. Got it. It's a three story Best Western right on the river. Got it. Okay, and then uh, my other question is, I got it. And then, so, okay, I understand. I, I got a rough idea because I can go on Google and, like, get a better view of it. The question to you is, I see you had, like, a, a price. Do you explain the price increase of 40 grand? Did, did you add something to it, or did, am I missing something? Okay, from what? It just says so, from... Uh, so we're popping it. It was listed for 339 Yeah, and then you jumped it up. Sale. Yeah, and then it went up 12%. In June, June 21st. So June second, it was listed for sale for three hundred and thirty three hundred thirty nine thousand. Yeah, nine nine nine. And then July nineteenth, it jumped up an extra forty thousand dollars. Okay. And so is the price three hundred thirty nine thousand or three hundred seventy nine thousand? Because that's a big it's difference. Three thirty nine. Oh, okay. Last year, the uh, appraisal from the county on my property was three sixty four. Was the county assessors? Got appraisal. it. 
So I'm selling it for less than that. Okay. Because it needs because it needs a roof. Oh, it does. Yeah, and I'm not going to put a roof on it. Did you did you get an estimate on the cost of that roof? What? Yeah, fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. Okay. Okay. Is it, is it just is it leaking now, or is it just needs to be done, or just it's just that time? Well, no, it just it just started leaking because a, a tree fell on the deal and broke some of the uh, shakes off, so one part of it's leaking. So I got it. Okay, Jamie, are are you residing in this property, or is it vacant? Yeah, I'm living in it. I got it. And how long have you been in that one for? Thirty years. Oh wow, wow, interesting. And uh, well, I don't. I'm just, we're looking uh, to buy some additional properties and we've kind of earmarked your area. So I'm trying to get the lay of the land. Is there anything else that you can share with me about the property? Because at 30 years, you've got a huge advantage. <laughs> like, you know everything about that property. It doesn't look like you have any neighbors, right? Other than the ones that across the street. No, I'm, I'm on a dead end street and my neighbor's nearest neighbor's down. I own a lot and a half on a house and then there's five lots and then my nearest neighbor's on the other side of the lot. So oh, wow. you're quite a ways from the nearest neighbor and it's a dead end street. Nobody lives on the street but me. They do. So, yeah. When you sell this property, what are you going to do? I mean, you've, you've been here 30 years. Uh, I'm going to move to Mexico. <laughs> smart. What part of Mexico? Uh, Baja. Oh, cool. Cool. You, uh, you do any fishing down there? Well, that's my plan. Okay, that's cool on that. Fishing here. This is a this is a fishing and hunting area. So tell me about that little that that uh, river behind that other building. Is there anything in that? The river? Yeah, that's the Clearwater River. That's the uh, steelhead capital of the world, right here in Orfino. Really? Uh, the, the hatchery right down the river there, three miles from me. That's the largest steelhead hatchery in the world. It's a U.S. Fish and Wildlife hatchery. They raise three million steelhead and two million Chinook salmon, let them in the river and they go out to the clear water, to the snake, to the Columbia, out to the ocean. And then in two years, yeah. there's a run that comes back in three years. So it's, it's a, it's a big uh, fishing capital of the world. And so, there's hunting with all kinds of game. We have deer, elk, bear, turkey, you name it, all in the woods around here. So it's a big hunting and fishing area. Okay. And you get a retirement area here too. I got it. And do you stay there in the, the, the deep part of the winter there? Yeah. Well, I go back and forth to Mexico. Okay. How, how is it, is it suffice during like, uh, you know, January, February, March? Like, is it, I, I'm not an Idaho guy. I'm really interested in the fishing and stuff over there, but we're looking to possibly rent the property out and do some other things with it. My question to you is, is it feasible to have somebody there in like the deep winter months? You've you been there 30 this, years, you know. This is a banana belt. Yeah. So you don't get a lot of snow here. Okay. Very little snow. When it does, it last couple of days it melts off. Now you, you go up in the mountains a uh, half hour away and you get three foot of snow. But right here, the snow is really mild in winters compared because of, because of the river. We have a... Uh, Dorshack Dam is right up here on the North Fork of the Colorado River, and it's a reservoir that's 58 miles long. I got it. Okay. And it's that campsite. So with that reservoir water in the river, this area keeps a, a milder winter than a lot of places around here. I but got Lewis it. Lewiston, Idaho is, is 40 miles away. That's on the border of Idaho and Washington. <laughs> okay. And when you go to Mexico, you don't rent the property out, or you just you just lock it up and leave. No, I just lock it up and leave. Okay. And if do you think that, I'm just trying to see what a market is? I assume summer's a, a great time there, and there's probably a lot of demand for like a rental like that. Well, summer and winter, you got you got fishing and hunting. Got it. This house would rent for about uh, thirty five hundred dollars. It's four bedroom, two and a half bath. They'd rent for thirty five hundred dollars right okay. here. Easy. Okay. I, I, yeah, I'm taking your word for it because I, I don't know that information. I got to like do a little bit of like figuring out. So, I mean, we're All looking at. do is look in, the, look in the paper for rentals and you just don't find any. And a lot of people, because of the three federal agencies in this town, uh -huh. uh, transfer of, of, you know, how federal.
federal agency, you get advanced and you move to a new place and they're always looking for homes. Well, there's no places. So if somebody wanted to rent this until they found a place, if they wanted to leave town and go in the woods and find 20 acres, but they'd rent something with kids, this would be a, I mean, this would rent real quick. I got it. Okay. So if you're looking for a rental, yeah, needs a little fix it up, but you, you, you're going to get, uh, you know, 3,500 or more for rental because it's a big house and it's in right, it's in right town. It's right downtown. You can walk down to the grocery store. The park is when you look down at these, uh, there's two buildings. The park is, I don't know if you can see it. There's a city park that's right down there and they're all within two minutes of walking. Just so it's a real centrally located and then you're really in a dead end street. So you have no traffic. You're in the city, but it looks like you're in the country because I have no neighbors yeah. near me like the big city. Okay. I mean, it sounds like an incredible property. I mean, it, we're, we're definitely interested and I appreciate you taking the time to lay the land. Have you had any offers on this? Yeah, I've had several offers, but wasn't what I wanted. <laughs> okay. Um, what offers were they? You there? I'm there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if the offers didn't work, what offers weren't working for you? Well, they were too low. Okay. Like, I mean, what range were they at? Oh, they were at 300. Oh, wow. Okay. And I, and I owe uh, about 275 because I had to take a line of credit out because my wife has cancer. Oh, geez. So Sorry to hear I, that I, sucks. I, I had to take that money out to use for treatments and stuff. She's in remission. She still does oh, great. treatment because okay. uh, the bladder cancer happens to be one that repeats. So, you got to take treatments for five years after they, you go in remission just so it will return. So I owe two seventy five on the house. So well, you're a smart man. You got to take care of your family first. So uh, I, I understand that, and I just, you know, it helps to just kind of cut to the chase of like what you need to get out of it. And um, yeah, exactly. So let me ask you: If I is the roof leaking right now, or it's just past its prime, or has it come up like in a previous inspection? Well, uh, the roof's a shake roof. You know cedar shakes? Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar with it. And, uh, and the roof's over 30 years old. So oh, wow. It wore out its time. And then a tree fell on it, broke some of the, the shakes, and it made it leak in one spot. So I got I it. Have a tarp, I have a tarp on there now, so it don't leak. But uh, I was hoping that that's the first thing that somebody would do is put a new roof on. Yeah. So I, I got a couple estimates. Well, they were from 12000 to fifteen, but... Uh, I didn't. I didn't know the roofers. One that had a fifteen has been in the business for years. And yeah, I, I need just because I I know anyone who's going to bring you close to what you need to get, and I want you to get it. Don't get me wrong. Is these banks want everything done before you buy it, and that's uh, I, I know you don't want to do it. You're very clear on that, but it's uh, yeah, exactly. It's like a catch. It's a catch twenty two. Um, let me ask you this: Would would you uh, would you consider doing any type of like creative offer with that where you get a, uh, some money up front and then someone covering that payment and then square you up in a couple of years or is that something you're open no, to no no lease option no, not interested in that well not technically a lease option but it's uh, well, there's different ways you can cut it I know I just want I just want somebody to buy it and it's out of my hands I get it I, I want that for you too I'm just trying to give you options because someone's going to have to put some money into it is there anything past the roof that really needs to be addressed right away Anything what? Anything other than the roof, like structurally, that needs to be addressed? Well, it's livable, but when we went to Mexico one winter, we came back and we had leaks in the in the line. I left uh, one of the hot water pipes under the cold water, and they had leaks, and I had to repair the leaks, so I cut the sheetrock. Got it. The roof inside, which is a minor. I do it, but I've got arthritis and bad back, and so I can't do it anymore. Oh. I'd have passed the sheetrock hole, but that's that's a minor deal. I just wanted to make sure it never leaked, and it hasn't. But there's just some sheetrock repairs inside. Other than that, okay, it's livable. Well, but listen, I really like. Yeah, I really appreciate you just like peeling it off for us and telling like where we're at. And um, I tell you what. I want you to get the most for it. I understand. And, uh, I don't blame you at all, but I'd like to, if I might check back into you like a month or something, I could send you a text to see if, uh, anything's changed. I mean, if, uh, you can't move it, 
maybe something to consider down the future. But um, I really want you to get what you need to do. You got to you got to take care of your family. So uh, I get it. So you got anything else, Zach? I mean, just just so I know. I mean, I, I'm not. We usually just buy houses for cash. Yeah, and we, that's what we prefer. And to just do. rent them out and stuff. If you were gonna sell this, let's say with someone who gets a loan or something, right? Uh, some big shot uh, warden um, at, at the prison, right? Would this roof pass an inspection if somebody got a loan? Oh no! Oh, it won it. Ugh. No, it's 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 past its prime. A shake roof only has a life of about yeah. thirty years, and this this was made. That's what I thought. Built eighty nine, so it's past its thirty years, and it needs to be. You know, it needs to have a new roof on it. Yeah, so it would have no to be sold for cash. It needs to be taken off the new roof because a shake roof only has a thirty year lifespan. Yeah, jeez. So it, okay. it needs a new roof. Period. When did you get that um, line of credit? <clears throat> oh, it's been quite a few. It's been a while now. Okay. But it's an interest only payment. Yeah, he's doing interest only. Okay. I mean, they had to appraise it, right? And yeah, that a rough yeah. What what number was that? Uh, well, I don't remember. It was. Well, I took the line of credit out uh, for two two sixty five, I think, the line of credit. And back then, it appraised for like two ninety nine. Okay. The last year, the the county assessor appraised it at three sixty four. Yeah. Since I put the loan out. I mean, between you and me, if it if it was worth three sixty four, I think you would have gotten some offers by now uh, for it. So the first thing I would do before you go to Mexico is I would probably just honestly I would probably just contest what they valued your place at because they don't know that the roof's leaking. It's got a lot of damage. You can house, file, yeah, you can file an appeal. The house needs to be updated. Cut like, you down on your property taxes. We would have to put a lot of money to make it worth 360 uh four and so that's the first and foremost thing just so you're not paying an arm and a leg we've had to do that a couple of houses we've had. tax bills getting ready to come yeah i don't know when your tax bill come when's your tax bill come due there well i pay it in uh, june and uh december i got it okay and when uh when do you usually leave for mexico uh whenever we feel like <laughs> <laughs> okay well i was just thinking it's uh I'm 78 years old uh I'm dude tired. I love it. What did you used to do for a living? I was a cop. Oh, cool. What uh, what state? California. Okay, see. Good thing you're not a cop over there now. It's a lot's changed. So. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be anymore. No, I know, but we need good firefighter. Everybody loves a firefighter. <laughs> <laughs> we need we need more good cops though. So I have I have uh, I just well, try to. We're getting a lot of good cops because they're they're in need, so they hire. Well, in Washington D.C., they're hired felons for cops. So oh, I know. Sense. It's like it's a, they went from the extre- opposite extremes on it. So, how long were you a cop for? Uh, I got almost thirty years. Okay. Now. Well, I appreciate it because I, I know it's a very unrespected. Like you just don't get the respect you do. Like people don't see the crap you guys deal with it. So we have family in it, so uh, we understand it more yeah. than anyone. Guys, so, where are you guys from? Uh, I'm actually in the, uh, Florida area. So it's, uh, yeah, that's, I, I don't like, I don't like cold weather and I like good fishing. So, uh, that's why I'm stuck here, but, um, yeah, but I don't like hurricanes either. no, I know. And that's why we're looking for other properties, uh, to kind of spread out like places we can visit and like rent out. So it's, I don't mind doing work on a property that the challenge is when I, I go to another place, I don't have my usual workers and yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, and that's the challenge. You're going to be dealing with that property. But and you got a lot of you got a lot of uh, uh, workers around here that uh, do construction and stuff. So I got it. You know, that's one thing around here. This is a logging community. Yeah. Basically. Well, here's what I do. Yeah, I know. I'm not going to make you a cash offer because uh, I, I know what number you need, like minimum wise. And but like knowing the work it does, I I would. At some point, if something changes, I'm probably just send you a text, make it super convenient for you. But if you can't sell that property and it's like not moving for like what you need, I would 
like to have a serious conversation where I could put some money down, do the renovations. Cause then I'll be all in it and I can get, get you cashed out sooner than you think, but you need someone to do those renovations. I get it. You don't want to do it. I don't blame you, man. Like it's a pain in the butt, but at some point we got to resolve this problem because you just need like need to enjoy life. You've worked your butt off. I'm not able to anymore. I'm disabled. No, no, no. I get it. So can we keep your information? I might check back with you in a month and I'm just going to see if you sell the property. I really appreciate your information. You're a super nice guy. Oh yeah. Some people aren't as nice as you, by the way. <laughs> I know. So, I can't but, help it. I know, but uh, I want to help I you. Served, I served the public for too many years not to be nice. You did. So, uh, and it, it wears well. So I'm sure you've, the rest of the family takes that attitude with you as well too. So, um, I appreciate it. So, um, I'm going to check back with you if something changes, um, and it, you're open to doing something creative. I, I know you said no, and I respect that. Um, but I, my cash offer is not going to be where uh, we need to be. And I know you need a minimum amount to pay off that, uh, HELOC line of credit. So, um, yeah. okay, go take care of your family. I appreciate the conversation. You're a wonderful gentleman and, uh, I wish you the best of luck. Okay. Okay. Guys. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Okay. Have a good one, huh? You too. And so that was a 21 minute conversation, but well, I'm just I'm just good showing one. you how to like the dude. It wasn't that long. I know, but when he called, rapport. he was ice cold. Like yeah. So you got to find it. Yes, no. Once now, a lot of you go when you go. Oh my god, it's a cop. I better run. Like no, just compliment them. Yeah. Like they're really good people. But the thing is, that property is extremely motivated. Oh yeah. He's not. I promise you in three to six months, he's going to be highly motivated. Yeah. That's a good he's one I'm going to put up in a follow-up. And honest, do you guys understand he has a line of credit? It's like a piggy bank. Like it's like a hard money loan. That's so soft. So he probably pays on two seventy five. I'll tell you right now, um, two seventy five on an interest only five, maybe five and a half. Eh, that's a little much. You got it five years ago, right? He's paying about thirteen hundred bucks a month. That's in a guess. That's only. a good guess. Yeah. But you know, someone's got to go and put in renovations. Now, I'm not the guy who wants to do it. I don't know enough about Idaho. Oh, I'm not looking to do like a short term rental because I don't understand that market. But that property is going to sell probably two seventy five. Someone's got to find out if there's opportunity. Here's the key, guys. He thinks it's listed for three thirty nine, and it's actually three seventy nine. So these, if you can get through hundreds of these, See, that's eventually the you secret. find people. No wholesalers want to talk to this guy. Three seventy nine, no way. Yeah. And the cool part is, you just got to open them up. Now, of course, he was a little ice cold. Give me a little yin and yang. You can open people up sometimes that I can. Then I can open up people that you can't sometimes. And it's it's a good little mix. Yeah. Uh, but it's an interesting one, right? I I think this is a. So somebody asked you a question, can you sub a HELOC? So the, the reality is he owns the property outright and he went and got a line of credit. So if you do a owner financing. Subject to a HELOC. The, 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 the term sub to is a marketing term. We don't, that's not a legal term. Do not say that to a lawyer. They're going to think you're an idiot. I just FYI, you can't use people's trademark marketing terms as like le as legal things it's not the way it's actually called it's called a subject to don't don't be like don't call talk to someone and say hey i'm flipping paper what what do you do i'm, I'm a paper flipper yeah. people are gonna look at you like what are you talking oh you wholesale real estate that's what the actual term is called guys you have to understand your terms i know people give you marketing terms and stuff and it sounds all sexy and cool but when you talk to a legit lawyer that actually went through harvard law school and to do real estate and you and you say terms that like all right Oh yeah, I did this type. Of, do what it's actually called. So, like, I know everyone. Oh, yeah. they, they call it a lease option. You're like at least with an option yeah. to buy. Yeah. And just so like, guys, no. Yeah. You, you don't do novations. Like that's not wholesaling. I'm not going to teach you to do strategies no, that so don't stupid. work in wholesaling. Novation is a technical term. It has nothing to do with wholesaling. And honestly, if you don't have a lawyer on your staff doing a novation, you're doing it wrong because you got to do power of attorneys, all this other stuff. Don't this guy, he's already been attacked by the, the army of creative financing people out there, but I promise you, nobody took the time to actually talk to him. Yeah. So 
guys, that's just my initial call. And it, it's way too long. You guys know I like to talk. My ADHD kicks in. And, but that's why I'm so good with sellers. But if they're not interested, I wouldn't have gone very far with it. I wouldn't waste my time. But the property's highly motivated. He had a tree, damaged the roof. He can't get financing. He's got a 275 loan set in place. The thing on its best day is worth 300, probably minus 30 grand. So the only thing you could do is a creative deal with them. But when that thing starts to fall apart and I send him a nice little text, hey, did it move? He might be down in Mexico and go and say, I'm just going to pull the trigger on it. The thing is going to have more repairs, guys. It's just, you understand, like if you take your time and work with people, there's no guarantee, but yeah. I've gotten past breaking the ice. Now I can crack a joke with them. And now the second one, I can push really hard. You can't just like hammer them. Or they do like the first lady, they just hang up on you. And she's the politest lady that ever hung up. Oh, I know. Like usually they're like, let me she's give you a piece of my mind. But it's, guys, I can talk to people all day. I know I talk too long. He tells me all the time. Not that. But, but like the reality long. is just, that's why I'm so good at right, connecting right. with people. I, I said, it's not like you talked for three hours about that. It was 21 minutes. Like it wasn't that bad. Like it was 21 minutes and you built all that great rapport. Most people for that report, it takes them two hours to get to that point. Right. And so it's a good creative. So I get people saying, oh, it's actually $1,900 a month. No, it's not. He got a HELOC where he said four or five years ago, right? Uh, a couple of years ago. He said a couple of years. Like 8.5 8. 8. was not a couple of years ago, brah. No, no, no. So, so just for clarification, it, it was like, he, HELOCs float with the market rate. Oh, so it? when the interest rates go up. Oh, he got a, a floating one on that one? All HELOCs are. Well, some HELOCs. Really? Yeah, you can't lock in a HELOC. Yet the only way to truly lock in There's one guy that is a conventional mortgage, like a full 30 year AM. A HELOC, it's reevaluated every um, 60 or 90 days, sometimes every 30. I know this one guy. All right. Now I'm I'll, just I'll telling tell you, you like he's, he's accurate. Like it's I correct, that, but you got to understand. Didn't the other guy get the other one though? What do you mean? I'll tell you about that. And anyway. so what I did is we did I one let. Deal where, we did one deal where the HELOC, it was locked in. But he had to get something on this too. You can lock it in, but you have to convert it. You got to pay all sorts of fees. But that was one. Of the idea is, it's like That's a credit true. card. It should be temporary. So you, he's true. not completely wrong. Okay. But guys, when they start talking about, I have this. I didn't even get into the shops. I could do that. Guy would have gone on for an hour. But at some point, you got to stop and go. Okay. Well, if things don't work out. Do you mind if I reach back to you in like thirty days? See how it's going. So now I go in my CRM. I go. He's a cop. I put in all the notes on the type of stuff. So now my second wave of conversation is much different. And the thing is, he's going to have to do a creative solution. It's not my ideal property. If somebody in Idaho wants to work with me on the lead, I'll help you out with it. It's going to be sold to an investor. That house is so I did it. And here's the key, guys. He's been in there 30 years. When you find out a seller has been on a property 30 years, compliment him. Hey, tell me everything about that property. He knows everything. He's talking about the wildlife, the fishing. And then he shares the nasty stuff. Yeah, you, we have a uh, old folks home across the street. We have prisons. There's a lot of stuff working against that property. It's interesting, but I don't know where it snows in Idaho. So I let him educate me. And, uh, but like, initially, you have to get through the qualification process. So we're looking for deals that are already sticking on the market. Everyone we've called on has had a freaking problem. And that's what you want to do. If you're just going to call on a regular physical, is it just one of the market? Honestly, you might as well take the MLS route. You'll feel better, but you're not getting anywhere. Oh, uh, okay. It, the one I was doing, was a, it was a hybrid HELOC. The, the, guys, there's a million okay. different products okay. on there. But the thing is. All right. Never mind. I got mixed up. All it's right. a good size house. Even if it was 1900 a month, you'd probably still get three grand. The question is, who's going to pay the upfront payment? Who's going to pay the repairs? That's expensive. And guys, he's three. 78. And my favorite part is. You know, I could fix the roof. I'm like, my favorite line to that is, yeah. I don't do it to a 78 year old man. I go, then why don't you? Why don't you have it done? That's a good deal because you get three thousand a month, even if it's at nineteen. But that, listen, guys, a property like that to get it to a true like short term like Airbnb, you're, you're looking at fifty to seventy five grand because it's very very that's outdated. A tough one because if you're making thirteen grand, but you got to put seventy five into it, that's our, still a rougher deal. I mean, unless you do a lease without, he even knew what a lease option was. Because right, he's already been presented. Yeah, he's been presented. Nobody it. took the time. Yeah. So once you find out what he wants to do, he likes to go to Mexico, he likes to fish, he leaves, he comes back with surprises. He's owned the house 30 years. He probably bought it next to nothing. He probably built half of it and he's got a lot of pride in it. And he's very thorough. He's a cop. Like, so. Yeah.
guess what? When I used my voicemail method, guess what came up? It worked, right? So Soldier of Yaw's like, the voicemail works. When, when you make it like, hey, give me a call back. Yeah, like, you who's tell that? Like, hey, I'm looking to buy right? your house. Uh, give me a call back and uh, I'll work. get your real offer. <laughs> that first one, she's funny. She reminds me of somebody we know. But yeah. So 275 if he owed that and if you got to put... Dude, the property's going nowhere. It's going to eventually sell to an investor. Yeah. And if rates, if they don't come down or they keep going up, it thinks ever someone's gonna have to pay cash, and there's no investor. Maybe someone locally might pay like two fifty because they want to renovate it and do the whole thing. And they, but like me from this far away, oh no! Remember, right. guys, we're in wholesaling. I want to get a property under contract so I can sell the contract. Stop falling in love with your deals. Yeah, and look at the pay. If you're running a business, novations, you're falling in love with a theory. And by the way. The reality is most novations, more than half of them don't work out. And you guys put yourselves in terrible, vulnerable positions. But listen, you can do what you want. Novations is not wholesaling. It's not even close. That's why we don't talk about it. 2.0. Okay. Okay. So, so. That, that's another marketing term. All right. So uh, why don't you ever do land? We do land. But why am I trying to wholesale lands? Because we make millions of dollars not wholesaling land. And by the way, do you think there's opportunities with his 5.2 acres there? Of course there is. But like, I yeah, sure. <laughs> you can drop, uh, how many units do you say? Drop 16 units on it like that. I go, really? Yeah, is that easy. simple? I go, oh, Some okay. of y'all are obsessed with wholesaling land and y'all aren't like even, you haven't, most people that tell me well, you should only wholesale land have never done a deal. And that, that, that's the problem. I've a one. I've had a couple of people come up to say I should talk about land more, and they're they show me HUDs like they're making like 30, 40 grand a month on land. I'm like, yeah. okay, you're someone I should talk to about it. But like most people who tell me to only do land are too scared to talk to sellers, and they don't want to deal with the walkthroughs, and they're all virtual, and they're all upset with me. Um, there's certain markets where land works really well, but for the vast majority of wholesalers that we've taught in freelancing.com, they do better when they wholesale houses than they do land. Yeah, I mean, to me, you still do the land deals, opportunities, but, but that one, you know, there's a lot going on there. Oh, but that, oh, yeah. I didn't even get into the land because the problem is if I went into the land, it was going to take away from the property that I wanted to find out. So I used the yeah. land to find out what's going on. But so if you're like a land person, you got that one that you can switch over to land and go, hey, listen, what would you consider? Because it's just a raw piece of land. Now, I have no idea what you can develop on it, but that's an opportunity for a builder. But once again, I don't know Idaho enough to even start like going down that rabbit hole. No, I agree. So, uh, Michelle, so how long will you follow up with that guy? Really depends. I, I would say monthly, probably. Yeah, uh, every thirty days. So I would start out with a soft text. He might not be a He's guy a that older, yeah. communicates with a text, but uh, great guy. But you, you guys understand? You see how cold they are when they initially talk to you. You've got to find a way to break the ice. And so we want to do the disqualifying prop. Once I knew the property qualified, I'm like, let's just, let's explore it. Let's have fun. And you always try to let the seller talk because they give you all the clues you need. There's so many of you are so scared. Like, what am I going to say to the seller? I'm like, they tell you everything. And if someone's been in a property 30 years, I can never shut them up. If they've been in a year or two, there's not much they can say. So it's, you keep digging, go, what's the real issue with the property? What's the real issue? And he eventually got to it. And I promise you, there's a lot more in what he's telling you. We haven't even gone to the fact, but try to tell a 78 year old man that's lived there 30 years that your property's outdated. You're wasting your time trying to tell oh, him over yeah. the phone. Don't even try that. It, it, it's just ridiculous. So uh, let's get some more calls in, see what we've got here. So uh, let's go here. And all right. This looks like a manufactured home with a price cut so not terrible this house in california would be worth a million dollars it'd be worth three million dollars oh lord okay. if we all just pick up our homes and take them to california we're going to be extremely wealthy i mean not terrible and good i mean, I just someone thinks they're a designer hey okay. uh all mm. new siding windows blah 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 ready to move into trailer park or your properties. I don't know. I don't know if the land's owned. I got to call to find a house, dude. Well, you can wholesale these all day. I mean, I, I, whatever. I don't care. I well, talk if the to land anybody. is owned underneath. That's a good deal. Yeah, that's that's the key. Whenever you guys do mobile homes, try to own the land underneath because if somebody jacks the rent, the lease up on that, you're stuck. Like there's not, you have no control of it, and it typically 
we'll minimize your uh, appreciation on it. Oh, no, I agree. All right, let's go here. Hello? Hey, this is Zach. Please give me a call back whenever you can. I hate those voicemails. Well, that's promising. A voicemail without a voice. <laughs> I hate those. You know what my favorite guys, when you guys ever deal with sellers that like you get ticked off when their voicemail is full, here's a little hint. My 21 years, that's one of the greatest Seller's motivation ever when the voicemail is full. Do you know how hard it is to delete your voicemails in your phone? You just click one button. I know. And that means they're just ignoring everybody, and that's why it's full. So if you get a full voicemail and you're dialing for dollars, you know, whatever you're doing, like definitely, definitely put that on a special target. My absolute best deals have always come from full voicemails, period. Oh, every time. All right. Decent house here. We'll skip that one. That one's too nice. You don't. Okay. A they got a lot of wood in Idaho, man. I know they got a little. Well, People like the wood. Oh my gosh. All right. Let's go here and. Is All right. That a house. Looks like an. It's on a frame, but it's like a tiny house. Yeah, I bought one like that in uh, Port St. Lucie. Yeah, yeah, almost yeah. identical. Drive by. It's a cabin, manufactured cabin, vacation rentals permitted. It's only 800 square feet in the main, 350. So it's uh, 11, 1200. I like the, they got a main. canoe out front, though. Maybe main. there's water nearby. Do we have comps? 275. Oh, Lord. Here we go. 255, 239. It's getting ugly now. Rented for 1250. Yikes. I don't like these numbers. I mean, let's see if there's. I mean, you got 299, 269. It's. It's Nothing just, in the area is selling. So this property has the – here's the problem with a property like this. You better get a good price because it's just ugly from the outside, and you can't – like other than paint, the roof's not bad. There's some decent comps, but these are a lot more square feet. That's a natural one right there. I mean, I'd be like – I'd have to be below 170 on this. But, I mean, the way that she's cutting the price or he – this might be a decent one to call. Yeah. So it's like a see how it goes. Let's do it. All right. Where are we at here? Okay. Eight zero one seven five five six. is using a screening service from Google and will get a transcript of this call. Go ahead and say your name and why you're calling. Z Zach buying the property. Have you ever heard of that? We're becoming too automated. This is Zach. Hello? Yes, this is Zach. I am looking to potentially purchase the property. Please remove this number from your mailing and contact list. Thanks and goodbye. <laughs> How dare her? Oh my God. That's so mean. So they look at it and then they delete you. I think now a computer can't do that. But I think it pops up on the person's phone, and then they're like, no, I don't want to deal with it. So this property is never going to sell. You're going to call back for me. We're going back again. That's absolutely nuts. Hi. The person you've reached is using a screening service from Google, and we'll get a transcript of this call. call Go ahead and say your name and why you're calling. Hello, this is Zach. I'm looking to potentially purchase the property here. I see I'm seeing listed on Zillow. 
and I'm looking to buy it. So that is the reason for me calling the house or cabin. Thanks. Connecting you now. This is Brian. Hey, Brian. How's it going? This is Zach. Hi, Zach. Hey, uh, are you the owner of a uh, 3762 McCrea Drive? 3762 McRae Drive, yes. Okay, hi. So I'm calling with my partner, uh, Rick, here. Hey there, how you doing? We, we just, uh, we saw your listing on Zillow, and uh, we're just trying to figure out, um, we're not from the area, so I apologize, I'm down in Florida, but uh, we're looking up in Idaho in the area, um, possibly yeah, for like I a rent. I got a home in Florida, and I get calls on all the time, and I, I spam them, so. Yeah, I know. I well, we, we, yeah, we're just, we're just making all, <laughs> I think we got declined the first time I called you. I didn't even know. I've never even heard of that service where they pre-screen you like that, but that's kind of cool. So where, where do you own a home in Florida? Uh, it's in, uh, Haines, Haines City. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm somewhat familiar with that. So, um, so tell me a little bit about this property. Are, are you, do you live up in Idaho or are you, uh, down in Florida? Uh, I'm in Utah. I'm about three hours away from the property. Got it. And I just see, is the, uh, do you have a tenant in there right now or is it vacant? Uh, it, it's vacant. I mean, we, we use it as a cabin. I got it. And do you, uh, do you rent it out when like you're not there or just use it for yourself? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes we'll, we'll rent it out. Uh, you know, I've got a, I got a number of, uh, of tenants or rental properties that I own here in Utah. And a lot of times I offer it as, as a, uh, as a bonus to my tenants. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. Spend a week up there in the summer. So, so, um, can you give me an idea like what, what you'd normally, what you'd get without like stressing for, uh, for like a rental on it? Oh, uh, you know, I, I really don't char charge a lot on it. <laughs> But do they do they do it for like a month? I got it. I got it. Wow. Okay. It's kind of the most we get, but but you know, if if it were fixed up, it would do do pretty well, I think. I talked to a leasing company up there, and they said, "Yeah, you know, if you updated it and made it nice and presentable, you know, probably be." Twenty-five thousand a year minimum in income for you, but depending on what you did with it. I got it. So, do you know what the number it realistically needs to uh, to get in that shape? I mean, roughly, you think? I mean, it's not a huge play, so that's that's the exciting yeah. part about it. <laughs> it's not three thousand yeah, I mean, square right. feet, but the roof looks pretty good, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, everything's really not. Uh, the, the the real issue is the uh, yeah the old trailer that's, that's in there just feels you know really dated and the tra trailer makes it look like a, a red redneck place right <laughs> so there's a is so, it there's a trailer on the property next to it oh okay I see it so, I see it I see it I okay I get it I get it I get it I get it around this, around this trailer and that trailer is maybe uh, you know five hundred square feet of the about five, six hundred square feet of the overall total. I got it. Right now, I see it now. Now that you mention it, I, Zach kind of pointed it out to me, and uh, it'd, it'd be nice if the, like all the siding matched to probably blend it in a little bit better, and that's what we were kind of thinking. But yeah. um, so I assume the uh, the up that's the upstairs that you've built above it. So, um, how long have you had this on the market for? Uh, you know, I've, uh, I kind of stuck it on Zillow to see see what would happen there. That's been there for uh, like a summer or something. I got it. Okay. And, uh, price keeps getting cut. yeah. And I just see you kind of like change the price a little bit. It's, uh, it's kind of been dropping and we're just, we're trying to find a realistic number. Like we can make you an offer that actually uh, makes sense. Cause I, I think it's going to need cash to close. I don't think you're going to get traditional financing. 255, 239. Yeah. Like um, every month so, it's like so. 20. 
Yeah. I noticed that there's, what, what happened is I noticed some of the uh, other this this little subdivision's got probably twenty homes that are like this. Really. And I noticed that uh, a realtor had listed a, another home very similar to this for two ninety nine. I thought, well, you know, if, if they got two ninety nine for that, my ought, mine ought to be uh, ought to go for two two seventy five. So I just stuck it out there. I, I think that's where I started. Is about two seventy five. And as they dropped the price on that one, I I kind of kept mine like ten thousand less less than theirs. And from what I can tell, there's they're sold eventually. So yeah. And what makes me think that the, the price I got listed is uh, is fairly good and now there's nothing nothing in Iron Park for that price <laughs> yeah I should probably increase it but <laughs> yeah I mean wh can I just ask the obvious why not just list it with a realtor then I'm just I, and I'm not a fan of realtors but I'm just if they can get two ninety nine yeah. and like put their butt on the line um, <laughs> it's uh, yeah. you know who cares what you got to pay them on that so yeah, I, I mean like I said I kept it about ten thousand dollars less than the than the comparable property. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's about real realtor fee, right? Yeah. So, so it, you know, you're paying the same as if I, you got approximately the same as if I hired a realtor. But, I got uh, it. I got theoretically, it. Theoretically, that would make it easier to sell, right? I yeah. don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, I'm not determined to sell it. My wife actually said, hey, maybe we got to keep this place. And, you know, it's been nice for our family. We like it. Yeah, well, so, sometimes I have to explain to my wife. I go, you know, when we keep it, then we got to fix it. And sometimes, like I like to me, like I own other properties, but like sometimes it's just I rather just sell it and start over with a new project. But um, we're just trying to see if um, have you had any offers on the yeah. property? Uh, you know, you know, I've talked to, to several people. So one guy did give me an offer. Uh huh. I'm about to, uh, two two thirty now. I mean, that was back when I originally listed it. Yeah. <laughs> and so he, he was lowballing me then, but, uh, you know, I, I don't, uh, you know, play, play with lowballers all that often, so. Yeah, I mean, that might have been the right number, yeah. considering everything now. But. Probably go back to him. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah, call him. <laughs> yeah, you should probably go back yeah, to him. Because he is, he's not the wiser, so. <laughs> Now we're interested. We know we got to put money into it. I'm just trying to figure out like the rental rate, and uh, obviously, is it we need cash? Yeah. And um, I'm just looking yeah, to know, get I the had best a price. Contractor look at it. I had a contract, or there, there was a contractor that was looking at it when I bought it originally. Bought it two uh -huh. years ago, and he was he was talking about just uh, you know hooking the trailer up to uh, the back of his truck, pulling out the building, and just <laughs> yeah, stick framing that 500 square feet. Yeah, I think would make the property well worth it, but uh, that ain't, that's not yeah, going to be cheap know. to do. Yeah, I know. Um, square feet. But you're telling me that's that's the norm in that. Yeah, that's the norm, like in that neighborhood where they they do that type of construction, where it's the trailer and then they do the loft above it. Uh, you know, there's probably there's probably fifty lots in that subdivision, and I'd say. And, you know, maybe a quarter to a third of them have, have this type of construction there. I got it. I maybe got less. it. You know, maybe okay. it's 100 lots in the subdivision and, and 25 have this type of construction. I okay. got it. And land's owned underneath it, right? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, based on this, I mean, personally, I would just call that guy back and try to sell that 230 for him. Because I don't think I could do 230. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not. Yeah. I, how much land comes with that, by the way? Okay, like and there's 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 space to park an RV on the, the side of it, and that's, that's got probably it. it, right? Yep. And space to park a couple of cars and park a couple of cars in front, an RV on the side, and that's that's it. Okay, so if you said it needs some work, some fixing up, like if we were gonna fix it up to the right condition, I mean, you probably kind of ran the numbers. What numbers would that be just to put it to the condition it needs to be at with the trailer, the siding, making sure it all looks good? Uh, have you kind of ran the numbers on what it would cost? Yeah, you know, say it's uh, say it's five hundred square feet that you're rebuilding, right? Pull the pull the trailer out and and rebuild that five hundred square feet. You're probably what uh, 
building building costs up there are probably a little bit more than average. So say 150 bucks a square foot to rebuild that. You don't have to rebuild the roof or anything for that. So yeah, you know, so that puts you at what 75,000 something like that. Yeah, I mean, and then it's probably worth 350, I would guess. Wow. Okay. Interesting, because I, I mean, I, I mean if, from what I mean, if you're looking at places that are are stick built and don't have don't have a, you know any kind of a trailer associated with them, that that's probably the goal. All right, because I mean, I was looking at three seven uh three seven eight nine uh McCray Drive too. So just I mean, same street. No, seventeen hundred square feet, seventeen forty, um, and that was listed for three ninety five. So that's why I was just curious if I didn't know that. It, the square footage, okay, because it had yeah, a lot less. I mean, that, 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 that one's new construction, so maybe I've, maybe I've overestimated a little okay. bit, you know? Yeah. But, that, but, you know, square footage roll wise, yeah, it, it, maybe not quite 350, but. Okay, so based but, on that, know, if I've put 70. There, there's a big jump between a trailer, trailer to home there and a stick frame home, right? No, yeah, you're, you're definitely right with that. So if I'm, let's say it'll be worth three. I mean, based on all the work I got to do here, um, we'd have to buy this thing probably at like 190000 if I got to put a full $75,000 into it. So a lot of risk going on here. Yeah, it's probably not worth me selling it for 190000 Okay. Oh, I got Well, uh, you have my number. Give me a text when you put the $75,000 into it. I'd love to see what it looks like because um, we still okay. kind of like the area. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great area. All right. Perfect. Appreciate it. Okay. All right, thank you. Seventy-five grand. People, I, I didn't even know. I didn't know there was a damn. It was built around a trailer. Like, listen, those properties are going to be hard to ever even sell. So, like, that's when you go through it, just comb through it. But like, when you find one like that, just move on because there's. Once he told me the trailer, I go, oh, because I, I was wondering why the siding didn't match. I've never seen that before. That's ridiculous. This is very entertaining. I got to see through Zillow a lot more often. I mean, I mean, that was nuts. He's off on his numbers because, like, what off. I basically just mentioned to him, and he just like shut up because he knew. He ain't this dude ain't dumb. Same street, five hundred more square feet. New construction. New construction, five hundred more square feet. Right. Look at that, five hundred more square Beautiful. feet and new construction at three ninety five. Which, yeah. if you may, is a ridiculous price. Don't buy but like don't buy trailers with structures this. built on top of it. Yes, a new construction on the MLS. And guys, I think yeah, this it was is... listed look 495 is the listing, and now it's at 395. So this thing will probably sell for 340. And so that has to go first for his comp. You follow up with the guy, and then his delusionalness will keep going down. <laughs> but to put 75 grand in, why did I just buy that one? I could oh my god, it's ridiculous. So I, I felt like a ESPN analyst in a Monday night football game through cold calls. It's oh kind of fun. Gosh. It's it's an interesting one. You know, pe people are insane, but that's just we life. should put up a divider both like call at the same time and just rip through and just write notes oh in between. Gosh. And then we can have people spectate and uh, comment on it. I deal with these people. So I, hopefully you kind of understand what I had to deal with on a day on a daily basis. No, listen, not, you guys, listen, I, I tell you, I'm not I'm not a giant cold caller. I know how to talk to people and connect to them. It, you are a little bit of a disadvantage over the phone in person. Like I love it because you get all the visual signs, but it, it's kind of the same. You just, you got to build a lot of rapport on the phone. But the, the first thing is you got to disqualify and then find either a motivated seller or a motivated property. And in the perfect world, they're both in the same piece. It's kind of rare to get those, but they do happen. Okay. But when we start talking, now I do offer creative solutions because that's part of investing, but like I want home runs when I do it. I'm not giving the guy 50 grand and then put a hundred thousand in repairs. That's a gift. And you got to understand that whole, everything comes from wholesaling guys. And if you learn the skill set of how to do wholesaling and especially the marketing part and how to talk to people, you can do anything you want in real estate investing. You can go do, you can own properties. You can fix and flip. I don't care what you do. I've done every one of them. Yeah, I promise you at the end, you'll always come back to wholesaling because that's where the best deals always come from. What you do with it afterwards, completely up to you. But if you learn this skill set, you don't have to outsource it. And by the way, I've never seen someone that didn't learn the core of wholesaling and was good at it 
the people who try to do it, like realtors, fix and fit people, they 100% fail. I've never seen one do it because they go, man, that's a lot of work. It is work. Oh, yeah. You got to rip through thousands of cold calls. You got to spend time. This is the value of a wholesaler. And once you set it up and you see an opportunity and you help them out, you got to get paid for your contract. And I'm tired of people saying, well, wholesaling is this and you're doing this. It's an incredible value you bring to people, but you've got to put in the work, guys. If you think you can make 20 of these calls and get a deal, you're kidding yourself. You just, you got to be mechanical, find the ones and go through them. There are better lists than this, but like if I'm on a budget and I don't have money, I'm just going to put in my time, sweat, equity, and I'm going to hustle through to get my first deal so I can get some money so then I can do this, the other, some of the paid services to scale up my company. But we all got to start somewhere driving for dollars, work your way backwards, government list. You guys know how this goes. All the other crap outside of wholesaling, it, I'm not going to teach you it. It's not wholesaling. It's something so I can sell you a course and tell you you might have success. Ridiculous. And for the other people, creative financing, just because you do one doesn't mean you did good. No. Anybody can do a creative financing deal. No. Does it make money? You're going to find out. If you don't make money up front on creative financing and you're not in a position to hold yourself, you could be in trouble. So I just want you to know that up front. Yeah, you guys, I hope you understand this. Like, just because you don't a creative finance deal doesn't because it's creative finance doesn't mean it's a good deal. It's got to make money. It's got to make cash, and that's the point of it. So uh, let's answer some questions too. We got some good ones, um, but it, it's just it's some interesting uh, calls today. But uh, <laughs> people are nuts. Uh, let's see here. Oh my gosh, the comments are funny. I uh, the guy had. I, I think they're all commenting. There's there's somewhat of a reason why I don't do like a lot of public uh, cold calling because. I've been doing this a long time and I, I'm never above it. I remember when like I started, but I didn't start out cold calling. I tell everybody, I wish I did. Me neither. Because I would have like crushed it. But like I let the fear and the anxiety, oh my God, what are people going to think of me? It's so stupid, guys. The worst they're going to do is hang up on you. Yeah. Who cares? Like do it. I have more efficient ways I can do it. I have people with it, but I, I don't mind doing it. I just want you to understand it is the fastest way. You don't have to get in your car. You can contact hundreds of people from the comfort of your own home. You guys don't need an office, but sometimes my ADHD kicks in and <laughs> you know, I, I, I just like some people just irritate me. I know I, that's just the truth. It's the authenticity. He's much more patient on the phone than I am. That's why he does it a lot more. He's got more experience with cold calling. I'm not the goat of not cold wholesaling. calling, but I, I don't mind uh, doing it. But like I talk to people longer because it's in my DNA, my nature to do that. And then I have to discipline myself. If I truly do cold calling, I'd have to go and do the disqualifying. It's hard for me because I want to talk to everybody. Oh yeah. He's great at it. And so, but I promise you, if I went through the cold calling Academy of Zach, it'd be like, we're ripping through 500 yeah, calls and you're not line. talking to anyone until the motivation pops out. And that's what we all want to do, but you have to learn how to do it. Cause if you want to get through thousands of calls, you can't have a 20 minute conversation with everybody. And remember, most of the deals come from follow-up. That's what you guys got to do. So uh, Soldier said, uh, Rick needs to come on more Fizzbos. Guys, if you want Rick to be on more Zillow for us, let me know in the comments. If you like watching him talk to real sellers, this is, I think we've never done this before. So Not together. We've uh, always uh, divided and right? conquered. Interesting. No, it's, it's, it's just not true. on YouTube. I don't think everyone's seen you talk to a live seller on YouTube. So I think it's uh, fascinating. You learn a lot, right? Yeah, I've recorded live at, like in, per no, yeah. in person. No, yeah. see in person. To me, in person it's a huge game. It's oh, yeah. easier. Like it's just, once you're there, like I know I'm getting a deal on the phone. Yeah. I could be told to F off. Like you could be like anything, but I want to tell you guys what people say to you or how they respond to you. It can't affect the rest of your day. It's just a phone call. And it, like, I get it. It hurts a little bit, but remember you've got to get rid of your former self to get in your new self. And if you use your old vision goggles of your old self and you're worried about people constantly judging you, you have to change. All you need is one person to accept what you do. Go on Wholesaling Houses for Real. We have every day, what, 10 or 12 posts of people just, oh, yeah. they're doing wholesaling. These are the people that actually do the work. Is it easy? Absolutely not, but it's very simple. And if you do it and you'll accept it and lose your ego and do it, it works. You got to pick the right market. You got to have the right attitude and you've got to take massive, consistent action there is no replacement of it. Uh, we're different styles. One's not better than the other, but they can both work. Uh, we have free wholesaling course below, freewholesaling.com. You'll learn how to 
wholesale yes. houses, uh, literally free. It's a free course. Uh, I can ask questions like, oh, what's, what's your scripts? How do you talk to sellers? How do I build rapport? How do I figure out ARV? How do I do it? Just go to freewholesaling.com. It's a free course. costs zero money at all. And you can learn from free. Freewholesaling.com. So guys, really appreciate it, guys. If you like more Rick, let me know in the comments if you want more of him on know. there. Uh, let me know any of cool tidbits you learned from this. And I uh, appreciate it. This is Zach in signing out. Rick in signing out. I'll see you soon. See you Thanks, guys.